Good morning, high performance computing fans, and welcome to Atlanta, Georgia. We are here on day one of three days of coverage on theCUBE at Supercomputing 2024. My name is Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be joined with Dave Vellante. This is our first time doing the show together, Dave. My first time at this show. It, yes. it is a nerd fest and we love it. I it's know, like, it's yeah, super it's talk action. nerdy to me, baby. It, 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 is. it very much reminds me of GTC. I mean, yeah. there are a lot of similarities. I think that's a great parallel, actually. So our next segment, very excited. We've got two fabulous guests. Welcome, Lauren and Mitchell. Thank you so much for taking the time during a very busy week. Dave, you kind of teed this one up. Yeah. What got you so excited about this? Well, so as I was walking around GTC this year, I saw this not to pick on Cray and HPE, but I saw this Cray supercomputer, I saw these hoses, and I know the folks at Omni, and I'm like, what, what, what do you know about this business? Because that looks to me like amateur hour, and I'm really worried that we're spending hundreds of billions of dollars on AI, and we're gonna have this weakest have link leak. of the hoses. Yeah. So, so maybe, Lauren, you could start us off with What's Omni all about, Omni Services? Uh, tell us about the company and then we'll get into cool IT. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Lauren Witter, Vice President of Sales at Omni. Um, Omni is a fluid conveyance specialist within uh, basically the hose and fitting space. So if you go back to when Omni was founded, a little bit before my time, we were helping OEMs understand uh, fluid conveyance products, integrity of connection, largely in hydraulics. And in that world, Dave, uh, there was a lot of standards, a lot of specifications. It was a lot easier to scale. Fast forward, here we are in, in the great world of HPC and integrity of connection, as you mentioned, and leaks uh, has never been more important. So we've fast forwarded, we've created a tremendous division called Coolflow, which is a focused uh, product focused group uh, to support folks like Cool IT. And, and Cool IT, I was saying that when I started this industry, IBM mainframes had these cold plates, they were called thermal conduction modules. I was walking by an HPE uh, booth today, I saw a Cray supercomputer, they definitely cleaned up that mess of hoses. Maybe it was an ancient one they were showing, like the museum. And, and, and Mitchell, you guys are like at the heart of that, not only the direct liquid cooling on the chip, but also very large systems to cool data centers, right? We saw some of those in your booth, amazing. Yeah. Tell us about the company. No, for sure, Dave. So I'm Mitchell Knight, I'm the Director of Product Management at Cool IT, and just, some very quick background on Cool IT. You know, you mentioned the cold plates. That's always been the heart of our technology. I have here one of our Omni cold plates, which is a friction stir welding new technology that we've been using for cold plate production. As discussed, you know, we cover from the cold plate all the way to the CDU level. We've deployed gigawatts of CDUs in the past. And I think when you we're talking about the importance of the fluid conveyance to the cold plate, that's critical. We can go and we can design the cold plate to be 100% robust, no failure modes, and if there's any failure in delivery of fluid to that cold plate, you're not going to have a functional system. Can I see that? Yeah, yeah I was just I was, let's, 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 see if we can let's, find it. let's show and tell here. Yeah, it's fairly heavy. Check yeah. it out. Can so, you can you guys get that if we hold it up? Which it is camera? fully copper. So you see the the cover there. That is actually just the convection barrier, which is again it prevents heat from essentially dissipating into the server uh, and really promotes heat capture to liquid. Um, again, our proprietary Omni technology actually does use a no filler and no brazing material to actually create the cold plate. And so that you know essentially means your cold plate is one solid piece of metal. So this would go on top of a black well. Yes, right. That, that goes on top actually specifically of an Intel Sapphire Rapids. Okay, sensor. fine, black Intel, AMD. A little bit bigger, I'd right. have to, okay. Might be wouldn't fit. And, on, and the uh, hoses, tell, <laughs> yeah. how, does, how does the fluid get conveyed? Maybe yeah. you could you dose through that. tubing. So we've got- Let's talk about know, our next problem yeah. over there. Yeah, uh, a piece of tubing here, but essentially within your server, you're going to be routing <laughs> meters and meters, a lot of the time, depending on how complex and how many things you have to fit around, of tubing to each individual cold plane. Mm -hmm. So if you think a lot of the NVIDIA systems, you know, there's you know, multiple GPUs on some of the B200 systems, it's eight GPUs that you actually have to go and manage. There's switches. There's a whole bunch of liquid cooled components you actually have within your server. The way you connect all of those cold plates and different cooling modules together is usually all through tubing. So you need to have the right tubing and 100% the right tubing interface to the cold plane. So that's... So, so what does that mean? Uh, unpack that for those maybe not as tubing 
literate as as you all. What does it mean to have the right tubing, Warren? What what makes that tubing the right tubing? Yeah, so interestingly, it's it's more complex than one would think. You know, a lot of times tubing gets kind of thrown in that fasteners group in with the nuts and bolts if you think of a, a large plant that you might see in your town. So in this space, there's a lot of complexities. Um, these, these particular tubes and hoses are peroxide cured EPDM. That's built the way that they're uh, compounded. There's different braiding, there's different HBV zero ratings. So the industries move very fast and what Omni's tried to do, and, and I'd say quite successfully, is get ahead of that. Um, and then to Mitchell's point, how it connects to the cold plate, and that's the integrity of connection part, right? That's where all the magic happens. And to your point, that's where that amateur hour can be very, very dangerous. That's so, the weak link, right? It's not the, the hose, it's not a lawnmower hose. You yep. can see it's a high quality hose, but it's the connection integrity you're saying. Explain that a little bit yeah. more yeah, detail. Absolutely. So, you know, they build uh, you know, all these different cold plates, different customers, right? They have all sorts of different attachment methods. And what we've come to do is sit with folks like Cool IT and prove an attachment method that we've tested specifically for this industry. We share that IP back to them, they integrate it into their plate, and now we have a great leak-free integrity of connection. So it allows folks like Mitchell to focus on their IP, it allows us to focus on our IP, and probably most importantly, Dave, the volumes in this industry are out of control great supply chains win wars, we can we can scale very, very quickly. Speaking of supply chain, just because I noticed it, and Dave, I see you're eager to chat too, but I, I noticed here on the host, you're making these in the USA. We are. De-risking your supply chain there. Yeah, so, you know, Mitchell and I have exchanged quite a bit, right? The industry, there's a lot of different things going on right now and dual sourcing and things. So, but yeah, we try wherever we can at this time to do manufacturing here in the U.S. So Absolutely. we talk in, in the security world all the time about security can't be an afterthought. It can't be mm -hmm. bolted on mm -hmm. after the whole system gets built. Mm -hmm. I presume the same is true here. You've got to design this in. So who designs this in? Is it a is it a thermal engineer? Is it a fluid engineer? Is there a great question? Is there a is there a, is there, the is there a role that, that yeah, architects yeah. this? Yeah. Ducals. A lot of the time it is our design engineers. Mm -hmm. So we work with, you know, tubing all the time, going into what we would call our passive cold plate loop products. And essentially that is really our focus is distributing coolant to our individual cold plates. And that's where, you know, relying on partners that really do have robust solutions makes it easier for our design team. So they don't want to focus on, you know, designing the best hose barb interface, making sure that's robust. We ship a lot of our products filled from Canada. So our cold plate loops are fully filled with coolant. Given that we're building a lot of these in Canada, it's fairly cold I was, when we ship yeah, these. So, yeah. you know, we do use a glycol water coolant solution that they're pre-filled with, it still does freeze at minus 18 degrees Celsius. So uh, a lot of the, you know, you can think about robustness within the data center operating conditions, but the getting it to the data center is also critical. It has to handle freezing, expansion, everything else. So Lauren, you said, you threw a quote out there, supply chains win wars. I think it's, I think the quote is, generals win battles, supply chains win, win wars. So, Let's double click on that. We'll talk about the supply chain. Know, how, do you, yeah. how do you scale to accommodate what ostensibly is this massive pending business? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what our cool flow product portfolio was built for. We start with the integrity of connection, which that's what takes the most time, right? Getting early with folks like Mitchell when they're doing NPD types of products, deciding on how we're going to bring things together. Then that allows us, right, to work with various supply partners within the industry, a lot of times because of the scale, you do have to have multiple sources, multiple partnerships, and then we have a specific division of the company that's focused on nothing but liquid cooling. So really, Dave, the plan is to try to get the industry together to adopt a lot of the same principles of this value-added integration, as Omni calls itself, then we can all scale together. Right now, everyone's kind of doing their own little thing, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, we talk about hockey stick growth, this is pogo stick. Yeah. So we have very, very limited forecasts. So the more we can agree on principles and materials, the more, you know, Mitchell and other competitors and other folks can leverage the same channel. I and mean, you can try to eliminate choke points. I mean, you think about yeah. the semiconductor industry, yeah. you got thin film in Japan, oh, no, no. you've got, you've got ASML one of the better in the Netherlands, thing. which is yeah, yeah. one of them. You've got TSM in Taiwan, yeah. you've got only one of them. Exactly. You've got the EDA manufacturers in the United States. It's like, making chips. It's like 10, yeah. there are 10 choke points. So, yeah. so you guys are anticipating that. You know, what are, the, what are the choke points today that you're like aggressively trying to stamp out of the system <laughs> in the value chain? There's a couple. I think, uh, you know, we 
talk about peroxide carotene mm -hmm. DDM hose, there's definitely a choke point right now on larger diameters of mm -hmm. that tubing. So specifically thinking two inch, um, yeah. when you're looking at next generation AI, AI racks, like those really high density racks, is three you have to increase the diameter of essentially your flow path to that rack and finding the right tubing made of the right material to accommodate that higher flow rate and still meet you know, all the wetted materials requirements is very complex. So building on that, You've obviously, you two work together. How long have you been working together? How did you identify the years now? Such yeah. compatible partners. I mean, yeah. this is a very specific industry. Yeah. 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 It's quite niche. I think it's uh, a lot of the time, historically, you know, we've worked with component suppliers for our passive cold plate loops, and it's been focused on, hey, we just want you to go and do everything to our spec. Mm -hmm. And I think where, you know, we found benefits is, you know, leveraging some of the expertise that these companies that have been working in, you know, fluid distribution mm -hmm. in other industries for a huge amount of time, they can actually bring that expertise into our industry. And that's been, you know, a huge value add for our engineering team. So NVIDIA is in the news this week, mm -hmm. obviously they get earnings on Just Wednesday, right? yeah, the, the, every week, but yeah. really in the news this week, right? Uh, Michael Dell uh, put on LinkedIn a picture of their Blackwell, their mm -hmm. first versions. I see them in the HPE booth. You guys have them in your booth. So Blackwell's now hitting the market. They're melting racks, okay? That's where you guys come in. So you must be watching that pretty closely. How comfortable, what gives you confidence that you can cool these exceedingly hot systems? Maybe talk a little bit about the roadmap and you've dealt with, you've addressed the supply chain, but the technology behind here, you've got some choke points, but are you confident that you can cool these systems going forward? What's your roadmap look like? Yes, I think when you're looking at, you know, roadmaps and, you know, te technology to support when everything came out on like the NVL 72, for example, and it was kind of a, a shock to the industry that, hey, we're going to have, you know, 120 kilowatts within a single rack. We have through, you know, the Frontier system, El Capitan, some of the true HPC systems, we've been doing more than 300 kilowatts in a single rack without concerns or issues. And that's, you know, 5.7 kilowatts within a, each individual server node. So it's, the numbers don't scare us. The next generation numbers don't scare us. And I think there's a lot of, um, you know, overhead right now in single phase direct to chip liquid cooling. I, I, I love the confidence. Confidence, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're not scared. Some of the rest of us aren't scared. It's more the power distribution. You know, we can, we can cool there you know, go. There 300 is. Yeah. kilowatts in a rack without issue, 500 kilowatts within a single rack without issue. It's how you're going to run that amount of power to your single individual rack, I think might actually be more of the gating yeah. item. What are some of the common, you, you see different uh, customers across the industries. What are some of the common mistakes or myths that people may not be considering when it comes to cooling? Very good questions. Uh, there's quite a few. I think there's a lot of new players within the space. So we see a lot of things that it's, you know, don't necessarily make sense or are kind of, you know, things that we learned a long time ago back to like that's got to be a concern uh, for you it, because it could damage the reputation and then it spills over to everybody yeah. so you got to fight that yeah for sure and i think you know as liquid cooling becomes more mainstream there's always this push that hey we want to get multiple vendors products on the same you know wetted materials loop coolant is going through one vendor's product and then going into another's where we see concerns is people are doing improper brazing processes within their cold plates that creates particulates, contaminants that go into the coolant. That then makes their way into our systems. Let's say it's our CDUs, and it cause, can cause problems within our products. Yep. And you know, if you're looking at a multi-vendor solution, it's tough. You know, you don't have one throat to choke. You say, "Oh, is it?" The I know. I was going to say, "Who, who gets blamed?" Exactly. That scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah it's like, different than air cooling, right? Like right? the air system. You know, it's not going to impact. One heat sink isn't going to impact another heat sink too significantly. And, and second sourcing is also yeah. an issue. Before we do. Can you address that? Yeah, absolutely. But really, what Mitchell said is exactly what Cool Flow, you know, our liquid cooling division was built on. We control the IP of the cleanliness spec. We understand the different nuances between the OEMs and the infrastructure, right, and, and the integrators. But yeah. we control the supply channel of material, right? So they know regardless of the brand of hose, the brand of coupler, we were chatting earlier, there's a lot of agnosticness because the end customer drives spec, sometimes cool IT may drive spec. So they know it's, it's getting delivered to them the way that the industry expects it. So they don't have to worry, well, I bought this from vendor A and I bought this from vendor B, do they know our special nuances? And that's really, I think, how we can scale this together and do it safely. 
What is? Oh, go for it. No, go please. I was gonna. I, 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 so I, I'm. I'm, I'm here. I, I got kind of two questions for you. One, I just have to ask because I'm such a nerd. What does what does testing look like for? Great question. Houses. <laughs> There's a yeah, ton of testing. It fails. Yeah. It, you, we're not exactly yeah. failing on yeah. a yeah. piece yeah. of equipment here. Yeah, I could say, uh, you know, a little bit to it. Right, there is some proprietary nature uh, because each customer right is doing something different from our perspective. Oh, but right. That's so you where, can't tell me the secrets. Yeah, like, great. We can offline, offline, yeah. but. <laughs> I think what's unique about this space, right, if you look at hose in general, right, there's SAE standards and, and different standards that govern us, but this industry is very different, right? So we're often finding ourselves validating at much colder temperatures, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, higher temperatures. Um, for us, we spend a lot of time understanding where in the application it's going. Something like you have in your hand is going in a blade. It's kind of a perfect life for a hose, if you will. Something that's going to be a source line that's hanging, that's a whole different integrity of connection because you've got a lot of weight and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of density to it. So um, testing is not kind of one size fits all, but yeah. we are working very heavily to get some standards for the industry as a whole uh, and share those around. So an, an interesting thing on, let's say, you know, you're talking about the distribution hoses into the racks. A lot of time within the data center, those hoses actually have to run through the same kind of cable trays and everything else that, uh, or in certain cases, they have to run through HVAC and plenum zones. So a lot of what the industry is doing right now is they're looking at cable specifications, so electrical cable specifications, and trying to apply them to mm -hmm. tubing. And so, you know, you're looking at, you know, fire prevention specifications for something that's filled full of fluid. And that's the, you know, con concern, oh, hey, your fluid filled cable is going to cause a fire. Absolutely. So it's, uh, yeah, I think there definitely needs to be more industry standardization that is going to add a lot of clarity. And yeah. I think people are taking so many standards, like, like Mitchell says, and just trying to adopt them, right? And, you know, when you say talk nerdy, it's like, we want to understand that because some of the things, you know, the HB ratings and things aren't as relevant to hose as they would be to some of the electrical distribution components. Yep. So yeah, so I wanted to tease the panel tonight. So we have a, a direct liquid cooling panel at 5, 5 p.m. tonight, East, East Coast time. I'm looking forward to that. Dr. Luca Amalfi is one of the foremost experts on, on, on uh, two-phase. Mm -hmm. And there's a big debate whether or not two-phase can scale, uh, you know, and, and if it's the right technology, uh, there, there's cost associated with it, there's engineering factors. We got Tim Shedd coming on. Mm -hmm. who's a, a, an engineering you know, PhD from Dell and uh, uh, Dion Harris from NVIDIA. So we're going to get three different perspectives and tee that debate up. That's going to be yeah. super fantastic. I can't wait to watch that one. All right, I got one. Well, I got one last question for you that kind of ties, in, ties into, well, there's two questions that tie into one. So one, I'm curious where the innovation goes next here, what, what you're trying to solve next. And, and on that note, since you've both been fabulous guests and, and maybe these are in tandem, what do you hope to be able to say at next supercomputing that you can't yet say today? Let you go first if you'd like. Yeah. So I think uh, the main thing that we're looking to say at next supercomputing and the, the big you know, innovation that we've yeah. had, especially on the cold plate and tubing side, is going to be you know, reducing our time to market. And mm. right now, you know, with how fast we've been you know, getting a whole range of different components, processors, we really need to actually shorten our development cycles while still maintaining the level of robustness and quality. Mm -hmm. So I think what I'd like to say is, hey, we've shortened our, our development life cycle to you know, three months, two months. Uh, right now we're at four months, I would say, for a new passive cold plate loop product, and that has not been fast enough to keep up with how quickly the industry's moving. Yeah. Yeah. I think you know ours is in the same vein, right? I think it's to support that and to support that growth. It's to help the industry as a whole understand this value-added integrator of Omni. You don't have to buy bulk hose and fittings and become hose assemblers and do all this testing. You can focus on cold plates and scale. Everything can come in ready to be plug and play and we can grow together leak-free. Grow together leak-free. It's perfect, perfect line to close. I look forward to discussing how the story has evolved at Supercomputing 2025 in St. Louis next year. Lauren and Mitchell, thank you so much. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dave, it was a pleasure. Glad you're here with us yeah. on the show this you know. time around. Good to be here. I know. I can tell you're going to enjoy the nerdy ride. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I hope all of you enjoy the nerdy ride. We're on here for our three days of coverage in Atlanta, Georgia at Supercomputing 2024. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.